Okay, if this is working correctly, you should be able to hear me through a very poor quality microphone uh, as I'm talking while I'm drawing. And I've now misplaced my stylus. That's a good start to the video, isn't it? That's an excellent start. It's not in its case. It's not in my pockets. Ah, here it is, hidden behind the screen. Okay. Um, so I just thought I'd talk a little bit while I draw. Um, partly because I'd like to, uh, but also because I uh, want to do something while I'm drawing. So I thought I could do this and and uh, get a little bit of value out of drawing, assuming that anybody listens to this in the entire universe. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm doing a bit of Jade and Crusader, and this is the sketching phase. I sketch, well I do everything really, on a Wacom, or Wacom, it, I don't know how it's pronounced, I've only ever seen it written down, a, uh, a Wacom Cintiq uh, 13 HD, which is a 13 inch 1080p screen that um, is a Cintiq, so you can draw directly onto the screen which isn't quite as special of a feature as it used to be, thanks to all the tablets of the world and you know, the Surface and all of that sort of thing. But I still think it was... Uh, well, I still think it's pretty neat, and I was pretty enamoured with the Wacom in general. Uh, but I do have a slight confession to make. It's not my preferred way of drawing, which is quite embarrassing, because... These things are not cheap. It was a £700 investment, which I actually regret doing. It took me well over uh, a year to figure out that I didn't enjoy this as much as what I used to do, which was to use a Intuos graphics tablet, which is the fairly standard uh, graphics tablet by Wacom, it's the industry standard in many ways, uh, and just draw with being able to see the screen. And there's a couple of reasons for that. The big reason is that I like to be able to see the entirety of the image without my hand in the way. And I didn't realize this would be a problem because I, you know, when you draw uh, by hand with paper, hands in the way so I thought that won't be a problem but what I hadn't realized is that I am had got incredibly used to being able to see the entirety of the screen as a, a digital artist I uh, I actually learned to draw uh, using a, a a tablet I, I I'm not really an artist as you can probably tell uh, this is how I've always drawn I've always drawn directly onto the computer I do draw by hand a little bit, but that's because I enjoy drawing on the computer. Um, I got a graphics tablet when I was 16, so that I could, which is actually a story of a lot of artists, but um, I, I got it when I was 16, and the idea was that I would digitally ink uh, somebody else's comic. We were going to do a comic together, they would digitally ink it, I would, no, they, they would draw it, they would sketch it, and I would digitally ink it because I had a copy of Photoshop and they didn't, and I thought it would be faster if I had a tablet. So I, I asked for it for my birthday, I was 16, uh, and I got it. Um, and the comic fell through, as these things do when you're 16, but I kept drawing, and I just started drawing my own webcomic. And, uh, yeah, so I learned to draw pretty much entirely on the computer, which meant that I learned to draw being able to see the entirety of the image that I'm working on. And what this means is that when I draw with a Cintiq, I feel like I'm operating with less information than I should have, and I don't think I draw as well. It's a very lovely screen, it's got very nice colour um, representation, it's you know, it's a nice size, 13 inches, it's pretty good to work on. It's a very similar amount of workspace that I had 
uh, when I had an Intuos. I had an Intuos uh, 3, because it was a very long time ago when I was 16. Uh, and it was what they used to call a 5. Uh, and I now think they just call it medium. Uh, an A5 meant you had an A5 amount of space to work in. Uh, so in many ways it was a, a big step up, because 13 inches on a standard 1080p uh, ratio, that's um, it's about the size of an A4 piece of paper, so it's actually a much bigger amount of workable space. But, um, yeah, just not, not as enjoyable, so I think what I might do when I have lots more money at some point one day is buy another Intuos and buy a buy the largest Intuos I can find and buy the largest most high resolution and gorgeous screen I can find and do it that way which I think will give me a better drawing experience than the Cintiq but I'm stuck with the Cintiq for now I say stuck with there are people who kill for these things well not literally kill there are lots of people who would really love one of these uh, and I'm sort of in inverted commas, stuck with it, a beautiful 700 pound piece of equipment. Uh, anyway, I actually had one of the very first ever made, or at least the very first shipped to Europe. It was, they came out in March, my birthday's in May, and I bought it, the first lot sold out entirely. I had to wait a few months and I got the first lot, well, I got the second lot to come out of the factories in June. So, uh, this was a couple of years ago. Uh, no, that's that's wrong. Where's the right character? Uh, to you watching, I probably look like I made uh, an almost identical stroke, but trust me, the first one, first one was definitely wrong. Um, with my sketches, I like to try and make them fairly accurate. I know some people make very very rough sketches. Uh, where you basically just have sort of and then they ink over the top. I try to make my sketches as close to what I'll eventually ink as possible. Uh, that way I am likely to iron out the mistakes. But they still have rough edges. I deliberately work with a bigger brush than I ink with. I'm working with a 19 size brush at uh, 300 dpi and uh, my little trick is well I say trick it's it's kind of dumb really um, what I tend to do is I uh, once I've finished sketching will completely re-edit the image to 900 dpi as opposed to 300 um, and have a very nice resolution for drawing uh, and the process of that means that I will then ink with another 19 in 19 pixel across brush except that it will be the equivalent of a much finer brush it's just uh, I'm working at a much higher resolution once I start inking uh, I'm not at all a great artist I am not even a mediocre artist but I do try my best, and that's all anyone can ask. And, uh, yeah, we make do. Uh, Jaden Crusader always, almost always has six panels. I don't know why I settled on this as a framework. Um, most newspaper comics have three most uh, manga comics or American comics they, they do they do vary but a, a, a Japanese newspaper style comic like you get in the funnies uh, but in Japan that'll have four uh, and that's actually a fairly normal number for me if I'm writing a, a strip style joke with just one note um, Jim Crusader is sort of a weird hybrid. It's a gag-a-day comic with quite a lot of story. Uh, it's been compared a lot to questionable content, and questionable content 
for a very, very, very long time, used a four panel system. You'd have four widescreen panels. Um, he's mi mix he mixes it up now. Uh, he started mixing it up about, I want to say two years ago, but I, my sense of time is all warped, so it was probably three or four or even more years ago now. Um, he started mixing it up, and he now varies it sort of whenever he feels like it, it seems. Um, but six panels is something I settled on after a little bit of experimentation. Uh, early Jane Crusaders had no uh, fixed panels at all. They would be however many the joke required, which is because I was still figuring out what I wanted to do with Jaden Crusader, and in that time of free and unbridled creativity, all kinds of crazy ideas start entering one's head, such as eight panels, seven panels, five panels, and so on and so forth. Uh, and after a comic called The Quest for Popularity, oh, what did I call it? It was The Quest for Popularity one of the variations. Uh, it was the one which introduced the character of computer. Uh, I had an eight panel joke. Uh, eight panels which I drew using a marquee tool because I'm terrible at drawing. Then later I needed a six panel comic so I just took the first six panels of the eight panels. You can see I've already done this bit here. I'm going to do this bit back here. Uh, I took the first six panels of the eight panels and I stretched them a bit. And so originally Jaden Crusader's panels were sort of widescreen. They were like, uh, excuse me, they were like questionable content or, gen or um, like a 1080p screen. But uh, now they are square, well slightly off square, and that's because I stretched the eight panel um, template to fit an A4 page even though it was only two-thirds of the size. It'd probably be easier to demonstrate this with visuals but I'm not going to provide any because I'm that kind of a guy. Uh, yeah, This is not working out so well working on such a small bit of the image. Um, Fun thing about this particular comic, uh, it originally didn't have any dialogue at all. All the storytelling was going to be in the um, in the uh, visuals, which is something I I like to play around with and I like to try and do to stretch myself. But I wrote this comic in two thousand and twelve. It was a very long time ago, and I'm only drawing it now. And I thought to myself, the reason that I have been dragging my heels on this comic is because it wasn't funny. There wasn't a joke, there was just a story. And so I was not motivated to tell a joke, I was motivated to tell a story, and the story it's telling is kind of, I don't want to say not interesting, because that would be very cruel to myself and would diminish all of the people who are enjoying the story. Um, it's sort of pedestrian. It's the sort of story that holds up jokes, which is fine, because this is a comedy, so that kind of story is, is what is desired. I just need a simple story to hold up some jokes and we get our yucks, and we laugh. Ha 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 ha! But, um... When I was trying to be all artsy about it, and make a story comic, I, 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 it just doesn't work. Nobody wants to see that. Uh, nobody cares. I don't care. Why would anybody else? So it didn't get drawn, and I went back to it when I was looking through my scripts, thinking, I need to draw this. The story needs to move forward. 
and I went back through, and all these panels which just said things like, um, the gang move in a bathroom, the gang put in a kitchen, the gang sit around relaxed after moving stuff in, they all got jokes written for them. You know, you can argue that they may not be funny, but they got jokes written for them, and now I'm motivated to, you know, work on them. So, it was clearly a good idea. The... Yeah, so, going back to talking about Jin Crusader and how it's a bit weird, uh, Jin Crusader always started off as a meta comic. It has always worked best, I think, when it's meta. And a meta narrative, if you don't know, is discussion about narrative and the way narratives interact. In web comics, especially, but in all other kinds of fiction as well, this has come to mean a, a piece of work which comments on the type of work it is. So, uh, one example of a famous meta film is this sounds terrible. Uh, there's no film called that. Is the film Scream and its ever sprawling sequels. It comments on and plays with the uh, tropes of a sci-fi film. And it's still terrible. Uh, uh, yes, plays with the tropes of a sci-fi film and is sort of aware that it is a sci-fi film. So when it subverts tropes or uh, goes into tropes of sci-fi films, it is aware of it. It's making a commentary on it. Uh, that is evolved into a whole host of different kinds of meta stories. And Jaden Crusader is what is both the most irritating to the internet uh, and the most enjoyable for me personally, uh, which is the type of comic where the people inside are aware that they are in a comic. Uh, and that creates weird things when it comes to classifying Jaden Crusader. It sort of is itself. And nothing else. It reminds a lot of people of uh, questionable content, as I've said, but nobody in questionable content is aware that they are a cartoon character. Nobody in a lot of webcomics are aware that they're a cartoon character, because you can't tell certain kinds of stories if your character is aware that they are a cartoon character. They, you know, how, how, why, why would you worry about going to university if you know you're a cartoon character? Why would you worry about being trans if you know you're a cartoon character? And so on and so forth. That's why most webcomics are not meta. But with Jaden Crusader, I feel that I've created a fairly interesting subtrope of of meta where the characters know they are fictional and know that they are non-existent and yet still want to live out a life because it's worth living life is great it's you know it is existence without life there is nothing but oblivion uh, assuming that all religions are false, which, you know, might not be a bad idea. Might be as well. But, um, yeah, and that's what makes it difficult to categorize Jin Crusader. It's what is difficult to advertise to people, and it's sometimes why it's difficult to get into. It is weird. And I like weird. That's why I make it. You know, my, what I find enjoyable to make may not be enjoyable to read. It is for some people, but it may not be for you. It may not be for a lot of people, but that's fine. I don't mind. I get sad that I'm not more popular because it would be nice to believe that the world is as weird as I am, but 
I don't mind. Don't mind really. Um. So yeah, that can be interesting. It's it's slice of life if you ignore the meta part. And as a slice of life comic, it's not the most interesting because these characters are weird and the drama is pretty lame. But it's not meant to be the focus. The focus is meant to be that it's meta. Anyway, I'm probably sounding like I'm just making excuses about that sort of thing. But I'm not trying to. I'm just trying to explore what is both weird and interesting to me about Jaden Crusader and then why I make this thing. Because reasons for creation are interesting. Everybody has their own reason for making what they make, if they make anything. Um, and certainly for me, the primary objective with Jaden Crusader is to make people laugh, but with my specific type of humour, which is meta humour, or just being really, really weird. This is very sketchy. Oh dear, very sketchy. Proportions are all kinds of over the place. I might come back and fix some of this. But uh, then again, I might not. Depending on how long this video is, you might get to see that. Or maybe I will realize I have nothing more to say and will give up. So, yeah, why do people make webcomics? Well, I know that I have difficulty making webcomics because the well, the primary uh, difficulty I have is ha the time that it takes to make a webcomic. Uh, the usual answer of how long it takes to make a page is 45 minutes to an hour per panel. Uh, and this can vary depending on how many characters there are and how much action it is and how much action there is and how different it is from what is usually made because if all of your comics are people standing around and talking you get pretty used to drawing people standing around and talking and you start to get quite good at that and quite quick but if you do weird stuff like I once decided to smash the house apart with a giant steam tank um, that that sort of thing will take quite a lot longer, and in fact took a month to do the 12 panels of that. Good grief, this arm is terrible. Uh, yeah, it took a month to draw that. Uh, admittedly, that was a month five years ago, uh, which is not easy for me to think about because I don't like to imagine time moving. But, um... Yeah, and backgrounds take longer and all of that kind of stuff. It also depends on what you're doing, so if Jaden Crusader was in black and white, it could probably be finished much faster, because uh, I wouldn't have to colour anything, and uh, it would just... That would, that would cut out at least half the work. Um, just realised that Crusader was meant to be a little bit smarter here. Let me give him a collar. Because in this one he's he's interviewing uh, perspective uh, people. So I'm going to give him... I'm going to colour it the same colour because I like the idea that uh, Crusader only has red shirts. I... I don't think I've ever made a joke about it, but it's something that I have worked on. There are a few cases where he's worn blue, and I really don't like it when he wears blue. 
uh, and want to go back and change those at times. Um, but I do like the idea that if he does smarten up, he just puts on a slightly fancier shirt that is exactly the same colour as his other shirts. Uh, I've completely lost track of what I was talking about, but who cares? It's not as if what I'm saying is particularly interesting or important. as I could end it there, but I think that would be a little bit cruel, especially to anybody who was interested in what I was saying. Um, what I would really like, I'll, I'll tell you all that, is I'd really like for this to get live-streamed on Twitch, but it can't, because I live in the middle of goddamn nowhere, uh, and our internet is too terrible for Twitch. It's barely acceptable to play YouTube videos on. Uh, you know, if more than one person wants to watch a YouTube video, no one can do anything anywhere else in the house. It, the internet just seizes up. It, uh, it's a bit of a pain. Eventually BT will, I assume, get out here and install uh, faster internet. But uh, it means that my options for sharing... How do hands work? That's not what this thing should be. Uh, that is still not where thumbs go. Uh, yes, eventually BT will, I assume, come and give us faster internet and the option to pay for it at the very least. But uh, not for a long time, I assume. And even uploading to YouTube is horrendously slow, so it works out as about 20 minutes upload for every minute of the video. So if this lasts half an hour, I'm gonna be waiting a long time. Anyway, I think I will leave the recording there for the moment. I might come back later. We'll see.